and do some voter registration so that first effort has been done. Our next activity is going to take place April 3rd and 14th, and you will hear more about them because we're going to need a lot of you to help us carry out these activities. Thanks to Laura Walker and the Public Relations Communication Subcommittee, our new, our first newsletter is out. Is it out? It's out. It's, it's out. out. Has everybody seen the new flower? <laughs> Who has not seen the new flower? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen the new flower? Uh-uh. <laughs> we got to figure out what happened. But anyway, it, it looks good. And again, I want to thank the committee for that. I also wanted to just say, like, so we can wait now. We wanted to acknowledge that um, the passing of our beloved Superior Court Judge, um, Clerk, um, Ms. Um, and Bishop Ann Hartman. We, um, she had her homegoing service last Saturday. She was the first African American woman Superior Court Judge, and she changed that office in the, in the two years, that year and a half that she was there, and we miss her so, so much. And I just wanted to remind everyone that, um, you know, she's gonna, her, she was going to be part of that, but um, we were so grateful to have her as long as the short time that we did. Anyway, um, that's a wonderful thing, and I hope you're keeping her family in your hearts. But I wanted to talk to you just for a couple of minutes, really, just a couple of minutes about what's going on with the Democratic Party of Georgia. They, um, our, our, our party received a grant to try to identify and get out the rural voters of people of color, African American voters and other people of color. And so they have. Um, hired three statewide organizers to go into counties where we know we leave votes on the table because we have not had the capacity to go there. And what we're saying is that we've heard you and that we're, we're, we're coming. So we're going to use vote by mail in an aggressive way because one of the reasons why we're leaving votes on the table is, we, is not because we can't get there, it's because of voter suppression. One of the counties that I'm not working on right now, but it's, on, it's actually Elbert County, is to have 11 Polling locations now has one mm. the entire time. Wow. And um, people can't get there. And so, in order to um, um, fight back against the voter suppression, we are doing an aggressive vote by mail, we're doing aggressive calling, we're doing aggressive mailing. And we're, um, to, even though we're not a, a, a rural county here, we're going to need all of our help because we are one big Democratic party. So, we are going to have some phone things hopefully from here calling into the rural counties where we are sending vote by mail, and they're called chase calls. And what we do is we say, you know, we, uh, we know that you have this ballot, um, will, you send, will you send it back? And we did it in 2016, it was highly, highly effective. And so these, this, we have the resources right now to reach people that we have not been able to reach before. And so with the help of the more urban counties, we can work together and make sure that we turn out the vote like we have not and these are people that are good Democrats that for some reason could not get to the polls. And a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, there are different, um, 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 there's one county seat and there are different cities. It's just hard to do. So we're, we heard this, we were able to get some money and we're coming out of that vote. And we hope that you um, will be able to help us. I'll be um, announcing and, um, and facilitating some trainings um, for all of us to get more proficient with what we do to not just take care of Muskogee County, which is, you know, Perry Blue, but we're going to get Navy Blue this time because we're, we're going hard mm -hmm. to, um, to um, be as democratic as possible, but to make sure that we encompass the entire um, second district and third district. We're going to be working in Maryland County and a lot of Harris County. And, uh, yeah. So we're going to all the way down to you know, all the different counties from here to Florida. And so um, I will have more information um, forthcoming. And, it's going to be exciting. We're going to turn this vote out. We're going to elect all of our people here. We're going to elect a blue governor. And we're going to make sure that in 2020, when the census comes, we have control of, um, of um, rewriting the districts and all that. And writing the districts just fairly. I always say we do it fairly. We want to mm -hmm. have to cheat. Yes. And so just know that this is coming. I'll be talking to all of you about the um, rural vote. It's exciting, and I hope that you, you all jump on this train together. Thank you so much. Okay, before I introduce the speaker, uh, there are some flyers and 
Mm-hmm. A little a bumper sticker and what have you out on the table. But I did want to mention John Noel. He was in town today and wanted to meet with uh with me. And in fact, it was uh he and his campaign manager and uh John Van Dorn because that's who he contacted and myself. But anyway, he's anxious to come back to Columbus and speak to, to the group. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Entrepreneur, information technology executive with over 20 years of experience then with, with that military, and he is a Marine Corps vet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, corporate and government organization. His profession focuses on cyber security, cyber policy, international security, strategic technology planning. There are about six pages or more to his bio. I got kind of tired. <laughs> and I said, he's very interesting. His bio is very interesting. <laughs> but I had to be a little selective because I didn't want to speak longer than he's going to speak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, he is uh, here to speak with us tonight because of the involvement with the Democratic Party. He served with the U.S. Global Leadership Coalition, Georgia's 13th Congressional District. Presently on the state committee, he passed vice chair of the Cobb County Democratic Committee. And of course, he's currently the chair. Mm. Causes that he cares about are children, economic empowerment, education, environment, human rights, Politics, science, and technology. Let us welcome Dr. Michael C. Owens. All right. First of all, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you guys might have kind of like step out from behind here. Everybody kind of sit this side of the room. So I should just stay over here too. <laughs> um, thank you, thank you for the introduction, and thank you for not getting off. Um, it, it is—I don't know you guys, but it, it is very hard to hear your own fire being read. Um, okay. <laughs> but with that said, it is a reminder of oh wow, just how much stuff I've kind of gone through and done, and um, I'll. That was kind of an intro, much more to my corporate type uh, professional bio, but I think you guys are probably more interested in. in Political side, right? The stuff's going on there. But I will tell you, um, one has actually dovetailed into the other, and and both have kind of came together in the last several years um, in a unique and dynamic way, which I couldn't be more happy about. And I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but to the Muskogee Dems, I'm happy to be here tonight. Uh, happy to see all you guys here. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for being part of the engagement um, that we need to make sure that, as Madam Chair said, we turn uh, not only the second. I mean the third district, um, but the entire state of Georgia. Right? Mm-hmm. That is that is all we're here for and what we're planning on doing. Um, this is somewhat of a homecoming to me in a way. Um, as I told Madam Chair, my father was actually born here in Columbus. Mm. Um, and my grandfather was actually born here in Columbus wow. as well. My grandmother, my sweet Nana, was born across the river um, on the other side of Phoenix City in this little town called Hatchetchuck. Hmm. Um, y'all know your heads. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. Um, so uh, I spend a lot of my summers here in uh, in Columbus, but it's not where I grew up. I actually grew up in North Carolina, um, in a in a very small town. People talk about Columbus being a small town. Like you have no idea. Hmm. Um, I grew up in a town uh, that had two stoplights, literally, and, and one of them just blinked. Wow. Right? <laughs> um, very small. Um, my, my parents were both entrepreneurs. Um, my mother owned a beauty salon, and my father owned a, a weightlifting gym. Um, so I was fortunate in that aspect. Um, but growing up in a very, very small town, there were things that, that became that weren't apparent to me when I was younger, but became very much apparent to me as I got older. Um, and one, one of those very clear things was when I went to high um, So I grew up listening to stories about the past and how things were and, and 
the quest to get out of that and to bring about change. Um, I, my grandfather served in World War II and Guam in the South Pacific Theater. He was a cook because um, being a cook was the role that they said he had to play. Um, I grew up listening to stories about my father who joined the Marine Corps as well at age 17, wound up on the tail end of the Korean War. After the Korean War, wound up in Southeast Asia. On return from that, he came back home to DC and then to New York. Um, and I listened to those stories. Um, and it always reflected on service. Mm. Service, you be the change that you want to see. Don't like the way something is, you get out and you work to make a difference. You find ways and avenues to find new pathways when those are not given to you. So when I was 17, um, I'll never forget it was February 24th, 1991. Um, that was a Sunday. And it's apparent to me because the day after that, um, or on that day, I'm sorry, was a day that the Persian Gulf War started by ground troops moving into to, um, Kuwait and Iraq. That was Operation Freedom that started that day. Um, so again, as a child who grew up um, with a father who was a Marine, with a grandfather who was in the Army, um, that next day at school was quite remarkable. As far as you can see, there's Abraham tanks, right? Rolling in, coming in. Um, and that evening, I decided that um, I was going to bring someone home and meet my parents. Mm. Now, as a 17 year old, that probably should have been my first girlfriend, right? Mm -hmm. um, but who showed up at my door was Captain Beyonce's room. Wow. And uh, I said, uh, really, went to open the door, and my mom almost just shut the door on me. Wow. And uh, <clears throat> I'll never forget my father, who by that time had been ravaged by war, his spine was all messed up. And, um, I remember him standing up, straight and narrow. Uh. My mother was in tears, and um, I said, we said two words. I said, it's time. Uh. My father said five or six words. He said, Captain, I've got one for you. Uh. That was the first step I took to public service, and to realizing that those stories that my father and my grandfather told me about how they fought for freedom, democracy, when freedom and democracy did not speak for them in our own country, when they were willing to go to a foreign land and fight for values and freedoms that they did not have within their own country, within their own neighborhood, within their own street, within their own neighbor. So when people ask me, why do I do what I do? I don't think I ever had a choice because the idea of service and giving more than what's been given to you. The idea of having empathy to where you can see other people's challenges that may not directly relate to you, but you have wherewithal to care and want to change and make a difference in those lives is what this means to me. So um, that started my career in public service. I did eight years in the Marine Corps, um, served at Paris Island, and then went on to officer school in Quantico, served out the rest of my time in the reserves. Um, but what I love to tell people is that the day I got out of the Marine Corps and took my uniform off, my commitment to this country did not change a bit. Because as I was mentioned before, we all have roles to play in this, right? Whether you're an elected official, whether you're a, a volunteer making phone calls, whether you're knocking on doors, whether you were the person that was in charge of bringing the refreshments tonight, mm -hmm. everyone has a role in public service. <clears throat> now, um, trying to um, try and decide exactly um, what to tell you guys about this upcoming election. Um, tell you about how critical it is. Mm. To tell you about how there's races up and down 85 and 75 that we need to win. But you guys already know that, right? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be here if you didn't know that. Um, 
You know, it, when I became vice chair um, of the Cobb County Democratic Party, I wasn't looking to make a change necessarily um, in the party at that time. I was just looking to be involved and be engaged. Right? I had been in the Young Dems. Hey, I ran for office. I, I ran for Congress in the 13th Congressional District in 2014. Um, and it was out of that same service and that same passion to want to make change where you see a possibility. You know, I hear people that say, oh, it's not your time yet, or you need to wait, or we'll get them in 2020. Mm -hmm. The answer is no. The time is apparent. It is now. Right. So when time came for me to kind of join the committee, I joined so as many of you did, right? I wanted to be a part of something. I wanted to come. I wanted to show up. I wanted to do what I could do. Um, but there was a fateful meeting in June of that year, June of 2016, where our chair was out, and uh, I was asked to kind of sub in. And uh, I did so. And for some reason, I must have impressed a couple of people. Because <laughs> <laughs> after that, uh, I started getting these asks and these calls. And it was at that time that I really sat and I thought about it. I said, you know what? If I was chair and I had an opportunity to engage and make a difference, what would that be? And I kind of wrote those down. I wrote all those things down. Um, and then just started paring them down. And it came down to three things. It was, if I become chair, my goal would be to grow our party space, i.e. the number of people that sit down in our seats at every event we have, to grow our fundraising capacity so that we could help fund elections, so we could, I'm sorry, so we could help uh, people that said, yeah, okay, we think we'll be with you with this. You know, what, what do you want to do? Um, and it was at that point, I thought about this a little bit because I do think it's important. Um, Hillary Clinton did win Cobb County. Wow. And it's important because that's the first time in five years. Wow. It's the first time it happened since Jimmy Carter, the Democrat, has won that count. So I get asked a lot, well, how did that happen? Um, and there's a lot of reasons that it happened. Um, but two main reasons. Number one, we all know who Donald Trump is. Even Republicans know who Donald Trump is. And there weren't enough of them to hold their nose <laughs> and vote for him. But more importantly, is what we realized within the Democratic Party in Cobb County what we needed to do. Which is first, we need to realize that we had to engage every single part of the county. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't know a whole lot about Muskogee County, but I can tell you about Cobb County, there's pretty much five distinctive areas you could probably lay out. Um, socioeconomics are different. The racial capacity may be different. Where people work is different, the type of work and trades. And we had to understand that each one of those parts of the county, there needed to be a different strategic goal and how we was going to reach out to them. We reached out to parts of the county where Democrats hadn't won a race in 25 years. Oh. We also reached out to parts of the county where Democrats won every single year. They had completely different strategies. We had a large part of the county to where all the races are won in, in May. Wow. Well, you know what that does when it comes to statewide and presidential elections? No one turns out in November. Oh. Candidates aren't pushing them to come out. The committee goes, we're not pushing them to come out. So unfortunately, where we have our highest concentration of Democrats, we have our lowest actual turnout. We knew we cannot win statewide seats, um, federal seats, and presidential seats if we don't do something about that. So that's exactly what we did. So on the heels of that, Hillary Clinton actually won our count. It was huge. News ran front story cover on it. Everyone talked about how Cobb had turned blue. And the first thing I said was, ah, I don't know about that. Let's hold off on the ticker tape parade. Um, because you look down that ballot, and let's see how many races we won down ballot. And I'm here to tell you, it wasn't too pretty. We won the races we should have won. We didn't even win any more than that. Now, it's just true we're more competitive overall, which is what helped us win the top of the ticket. Um, but we were still lagging. We closed the gap, we were still lagging a bit. So coming into 2016 after that, we did several things within the party that I think really has made a difference. Um, number one, starting the day after the election, I got active involved in every grassroots group that we could find. Mm. And my word was simple as this. 
as the Cobb County Democratic Committee, the Muscogee County Democratic Committee, we are the official link, as you mentioned before, the tie into the Democratic Party of Georgia and to the DNC and all the rest. That is important because there are resources and availability tied to that and access tied to that. But just as importantly, I made sure that I made everyone understand that whether you were part of the Pantsuit Nation or whether you was a stronghold burning crack, it made no difference to me. Because what was important to me is to get a Democrat elected. No matter what side of it, as long as you were left or center, you were good with me. When they were along that spectrum, we need you, we need your vote, we need your energy. So I created an environment that was inclusive. We built a executive committee that was that was grounded within that inclusivity that we were going to have everyone part and partial and make opportunities and roles for everyone to get engaged. Um, I know there are subcommittees here. We didn't have any. We now have 10. Wow. I changed our morning meetings um, along with our, mm -hmm. those guys do a good job of wanting to be inclusive and supportive of them. But we knew we had to reach a target market or, or, or target age somewhere between 30 and 50 um, of people that could actually come out and really bring new energy. So, um, so a lot of different things we actually did for us inclusivity, bringing people in, giving people roles to do, um, breaking down those barriers as far as we want you to be here. We yeah. want you to be part of this organization and give the belief that we can actually win. So much of this is tied to what we think is possible. And as Democrats, a lot of times um, people talk about, you know, we've got to register people to vote. We've got to get the right messaging. We've got to do all this. The number one thing we've got to do is get engaged, is show up. And as simple as a point that sounds, Madam Chair, I'm sure you can agree, that is very hard to do. Mm -hmm. It's simply getting people to show up. So one of the things we started doing was giving people opportunities to show up, not just at a Saturday morning meeting, mm -hmm. but at a Tuesday evening event, mm -hmm. um, at socials that we started having. If you guys heard about, um, we introduced this idea of, of Democrats After Dark. Wow. It's been wildly successful. Other, can, uh, other uh, counties are now doing that as well. It's good as an opportunity not only fundraise, um, because to step up, we charge $25 mm -hmm. for each of these events. Um, but it gives the opportunity to bring candidates in and more of a social event. It gives opportunities where, as an organization, we're just not standing up here talking to you. It gives an opportunity for more engagement. Um, we started, you know, the typical picnics. Um, but one thing we did was really branded what we've done, right? Give everything a name and a purpose behind what's being done. So we have something for folks that want to come for $5 or $25 or $50. Or $150. Give everyone an opportunity to get engaged. There's something else where I also did when I was talking about those five different parts of the county, if you will. Um, we basically went on a road tour. You know, it was a road trip. You know, literally packed up my backpack, threw it on, and going, we're going to go to every part of this county and engage voters where they are. And it went to parts of the county that I rarely even go into, parts where I didn't know a soul. You know, it didn't matter. It's rainy Tuesday night. We had 125 people show up in Ackworth, Georgia, which is where we had some of the lowest turnout for Democrats, period, that year before. Mm. One of our largest community engagement meetings. Why? Because we showed up. Mm. Folks literally gave us a standing ovation for coming <clears throat> into their neighborhood. Wow. So it's vitally important. We spent the last, I can't tell you how many years, with a kind of a mantra of basically they will come to us. We build it and they come to us. Um, that's not a sustainable form of growth. It may keep you in business, if you will, but you won't grow. You know, people have to be engaged where they are. Um, so as we go into 2018, talking about the criticality of this year, and talking about the ability to win seats, seats have opened up. Um, 17 house seats has opened up this past year. 16 of those have been Republican. I'm talking statewide. I've, started, I've seen a trend. Anytime that we, Democrats start to get close to winning a seat, I mean really close, Republicans have quit. Mm. They decide it's more important to them to, to keep mm. whatever panache they have, wow. <laughs> whether it's five years in office or 30 years in office, and quit, mm. rather than actually fight to keep a seat. Mm. The fact of the matter is, there is a seat change at play here. And Republicans know it. 
They're giving up their seats. Last session, he launched House Bill 515, which is nothing more than to take black votes out of out of another di- or out of his district, move them to another district, and pull more white voters into his district. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy that we activated and that that measure failed. Yes, it failed. <laughs> so, folks, say, okay, well, it's great. It failed. Um, but what's going to happen after that? I'll tell you what happened after that. He quit. Wow. He quit. The first day of session this year, news report went out that Rich Gold decided that he would rather spend more time with his family. Mm. <laughs> more time with his family. <laughs> Let alone the fact that we have a 40 day session. But let's not talk about that. He'd rather spend more time with his family than run for a seat again where he only won by several hundred votes last year. So this is real. The work that we we're doing, the persistence that we we're having, look, this didn't start last year. It's not going to end this year. Mm. I tell you, if you only got one pair of shoes to canvas in, go buy another pair. It's going to take more than the soles you have in your current pair of shoes to make this the end that we need to have it. Mm. Right? Um, as we move forward, as we look to no, I mean, as we look to May twenty second, um, as a county part, I made a couple of changes to our our, our board. One of the first ones, one of the biggest ones I made was in our mission statement, which said our mission is to elect Democrats. That is why we exist. Slightly modified that. I said our mission is to elect good Democrats yes. and to promote democratic values, ideals, principles, and all the like. You know it when you see it. I don't have to explain it to you. Mm-hmm. That in itself has made a huge difference in people view our organization and what it means and what our purpose is. We now, for the first time in the history, and I just spoke with Governor Barnes yesterday, um, that most can ever remember, we have almost, with the exception of one, we have every single partisan seat in Cobb County that is being challenged. What? Every one. Every single one. And that is the school board of county position all the way up to Congress. Mm. Wow. This is happening, people. It's real. I'm saying some hands nodding. Yep, dag, I'm right. It is real. Republicans know it. We know it. Um, but I'm also going to say this: they're not going to go down without a fight, mm-hmm. right? You push them, you push them. They, they might quit. <laughs> <laughs> they quit, but they have to see that it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, pushing into into parts of the county and parts in, in the surrounding counties that has been proven red. When they start to see that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, when they start to see that in certain areas, especially if you start talking about state senate districts and state and, and congressional districts, where you have to move outside of just Muskogee County. Because one of the most impactful things we did last year was when Tom Price temporarily took over the role as HHS Secretary. <laughs> uh, prior to that, um, we started we started a group called the Sixth Congressional District Task Force. And that was instrumental because that was the first time that we've had three counties in a lot actually working together for a single purpose. When people was working and protesting to not let the confirmation for Tom Price happen, it was pretty simple. I looked at the numbers and going, he's going to get confirmed. Mm-hmm. So instead of protesting this, let's shift some of that energy to trying to win a house seat. Mm-hmm. We had some dynamic things happening there in three specific areas. Number one was the grassroots effort that came out and was protesting marching. Having the ability to work with the department, I mean, the, um, the Democrat Party of Georgia is critical in a couple of ways. Um, as I mentioned before, they have access and they have tools. So being able to use Vote Builder, being able to use uh, Minivan, being able to use the, uh, the um, phone banking, the virtual phone banking tool, which he's for us, right? Saves county money, was able to kind of go in and use that. The third thing was the county party itself. Being that so much energy, so many people that had got engaged, this was their first rodeo, right? Didn't really understand elect, elected politics and how campaigns work, and especially, God knows, it was a jungle primary and a special election, so throw everything else out the window. This is not really how things work. It's how it's going to work in 2017, because we're trying to win a seat. Mm-hmm. What we did was we literally went out and got embedded into all of those grassroots organizations. We went to the marches, to the rally. I put ourselves forward as a county committee, 
as with a big D on my chest to say, the counting party is here. We are acting we're part of this. Because I don't know about you guys, but I hear flat, not only my county, but a lot of counties about, oh, the county party doesn't do this, the party doesn't do that, the party doesn't do this. What I'll tell you, before John Ossoff even got in that race, we had already had 384 people trained for canvassing and phone making and ready to go. By three weeks after that, we had 782. By the time the April 18th election came, as a party, Cobb, DeKalb, and North Fulton, we had trained over 1,000 people. 1,000 people to go out and knock on doors and make phone calls. Throughout that election, we made almost 25,000 calls. Wow. Knocked on thousands of doors to try to help a Democrat get elected. And I'll go back here to the bylaws and say that because multiple Democrats was in that election, mm. there's a bylaw that says that we cannot coordinate, support, fund, interact with any of those candidates. But what I'm here to tell you is that that doesn't mean you sit idly by, you take a seat over there and you wait till the party, till the primaries are over. There are things that you can do now. The number one thing, people may not think about it, but a lot of people don't know there's an election coming up. How they could not know is I'm still amazing to me, but I'm not going to doors to know that it's possible when it happens. So what we can do is let people know there is an election coming up. And what we can do is let them know that we have outstanding, dynamic, hard-charging Democrats that are ready to step up and lead. And number three, we can help them with information they need when it comes to learning more about those candidates. So within the frameworks of the bylaws, we can do those things. So sitting idly by while an election goes on is something that I do not support and don't encourage any county party to do so. Um, so we did that in that sixth congressional district race, and I would say we had a very strong impact on that turn. Um, unfortunately, we came just a little bit short, 48.1%. But the important part to me was that was an election that we were not even supposed to be in. Mm. Democrats weren't even supposed to have a chance. When I started that task force on January 24th, I was told I was wasting my time. I was told there was no way that there were two, two Republicans that were make the runoff. We were sitting on the sidelines and we just waited for 2020. I don't think so. Because of the work that we did in 2017, when it's 2018, I mean, I'm sorry, um, later in 2017, we actually had the another special election because of governor's race. We had a special election in state Senate 6. That was Congressional District 6. But in state Senate 6, which Republicans had a firm hold on, we actually put two Democrats in runoff and iced them out. Mm. In that race, it was directly affected on the state Senate race that we can now have another senator down in the kind of gold dome do the work that we need to. So, I guess the moral of that story is if you don't succeed once, you try, try again. Right? It will happen. Another fallout from that, there's another overlay from that same district. Um, we just had qualifying. Gosh, have we that's over with? <laughs> <laughs> there was uh, a school board race, school board seat that had been held by a longtime Republican in that same overlay of that same district. Um, who decided, guess what? She wasn't qualified. Another Republican that's given up. Mm. What do we do? We put two Democrats qualified for that seat. Wow. So again, Democrats are, uh, Republicans are iced out. That is another seat we're going to pick up. So, ladies and gentlemen, literally from school board to Congress, we are winning seats. Yes. We are winning seats. <laughs> and the concerted effort that we're taking, it does happen to small Scott. Yes, Democrats are fired up because they don't like Trump, but not liking Trump is not enough. You, it is not enough. I could stand up here for an hour talking about how despicable, deplorable, and all the other adjectives you want to use to describe him and his feckless. I said, I'm making sure. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure. <laughs> that administrative administration of his. Um, Gosh, yes. <laughs> but what this has to come down to is energizing people at the grassroots level, mm -hmm. energizing our neighbors, bringing more people into the fold. Um, we have enough Democrats to win these seats. Mm -hmm. We already do. Voter registration is great, but we have enough Democrats to win these seats. This is all about turnout. Mm -hmm. This is all about getting people to understand that we have an opportunity to make change. And anyway, if it has not affected you yet, it will affect you. 
It doesn't matter if you're black, white, brown. If you make a million dollars a year or you make $2,700 a year, it affects you what's going on. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, as Democrats, we know who we are. Yes, we're a big tent party. Yes, we have different spheres of beliefs and engagement across the, from one end to the other, but we're all Democrats. Mm -hmm. Whether you want to be a liberal or progressive, slightly conservative, <laughs> you know, yeah. die hard blue liberal, mm -hmm. the goal is we need Democrats to be seats. Mm -hmm. As I told someone to call my office one day who said, Chairman Owens, I'm interested in helping. I'm ready to go. I want to fight the fight. I said, that's great. It's wonderful. There's phone making training going on. We have canvassing going on next week. And they told me, no, 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 that's not what I want to do. I want to, I'm interested in part of the resistance. <laughs> <laughs> what? Part of the resistance. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I want to, you know, I got my signs. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But you do understand that the resistance is a temporary state mm -hmm. of resistance. Mm -hmm. We can never normalize this resistance. A resistance is something that is just a being. Mm -hmm. We have to end the resistance. There are only two ways to do that. The only two ways this resistance is going to end. Mm -hmm. either, either we win or we quit. Mm. How many quitters do we have here? No. <laughs> How many winners do we have? Woo How many winners? How many people is going to take to stand up and knock on doors to make phone calls? How many guys make phone calls, knock on doors, or wrote a check in this last election cycle? How many did? No, never mind. <laughs> I'm not gonna call you out like that. But back to what I was saying at the beginning. Everyone has their role in this. Everyone. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna leave you guys with that. It's been long enough. Um I do see some friendly faces in the crowd. Um she didn't go through my whole bio, it is true, but there's a lot of different ways uh, that I'm engaged at the local, state, and national level. If you guys want to get in touch with me about anything, I'm an open book. I'll give you a secret. I don't get many people. You want Facebook Live. Um, <laughs> Dom knows it. A few other people know it. If you want to get in touch with me after midnight on Facebook Live. I mean, on Facebook Messenger. <laughs> that is the way to get in touch with me. Right? Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm always eager to answer questions. Um, I've literally worked, like I said, from the ground level up through National Security Advisor on campaigns. Um, so feel free to, to reach out and ask a minute for questions. What can the young Democrats do, like uh, here out here in, uh, in Muskogee County? Because we have a chapter, um, and due to some per, uh, is it some uh, some issues uh, going on, we haven't had like too many meetings and everything. But we want to get that active again. But what have the young Democrats been doing up in the Metro Atlanta area, where like we have so much Democratic activity buzzing? Up there, we, we missed the convention, but still. Sure. <laughs> yeah, um, and actually, the convention was just two weekends ago, right? I, yeah. <laughs> um, which was, which was, by the way, a, a well attended, great convention, um, really highly engaged. Mm -hmm. But to your point about what young Dems can do, last year at the convention, I think you were there. Yes. I, I gave a discussion about young Democrats taking a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. And then now we're in the context of young Democrats, we're, we're mm -hmm. squarely in the 14 to 36 type of thing, mm -hmm. um, discussion. But 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 my message then last year was the same as today. Mm -hmm. you, you have earned and you should have a seat at the table. And to the to the rest of you, let these young Democrats have a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. They have a lot to offer. Yes, clap for that. They have a lot to offer. As I say, young people are not our future. They are today. Yes. Right? With the way technological advances are going. Lord knows I had to get some young kids to set up a Snapchat for us, right? <laughs> kids use it, right? I mean, as much as we're on Facebook, you know, the young kids, they're on off to something else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the thing is to get engaged. Yes. Offer to set up that Snapchat account, right? Mm -hmm. Offer to come in and do that canvassing, mm -hmm. right? There's not a role that, that cannot be filled, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Um, this past, um, when I was talking about the Young Dems convention, mm -hmm. there was two young men that came up to me. And he said, Dr. Owens, at the convention last year when you gave that speech, we were in the room. They were from Camden County. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, we took that information and we went back to our county party. And we went. And we showed up. And we showed up the next week, or the next month, and we showed up the next month. Mm -hmm. And we asked them, how can we help? Mm -hmm. 
He goes, you know what? We offered ways, and they took us up on it. He goes, and now a year later, they actually sponsored us to come to this convention. So they actually poured money into our young Democrats committee mm -hmm. so they could fund us and help us get here. So it does work. You have to take a seat at the table. Yes, yes sir. Okay. How would, how would, how would uh, the Democrats uh, work on expanding water? Oh, good question. Ah, yes. Woo! <laughs> so what's going on here? Mm -hmm. okay. um, so, first of all, KSU is an outstanding school, great school. They just got their, um, they're getting their Young Dems charter started back up. So, mm -hmm. if you do go back, you'll have a Democratic home to go back to. If not, we're happy to have you in the Cal County Democratic Committee. Yeah. And they got rid of Sam Owens, too. Oh, <laughs> they got rid of my friend Sam. Uh, that's a whole other. We're not. We're not. That's a whole other. So on everyone's mind in Metro Atlanta, and probably affect everyone the same. Mm -hmm. However, you know, Republicans tend to think in the past that when you bring light rail into some area, that you're going to bring crime. Mm -hmm. And I used to ride Martyr every week when I traveled. I rode the Metro in DC. I rode the Metro in Paris and Berlin in Stockholm, and I've yet to see anyone with a 65 inch TV <laughs> on their back right. on the train. Wow. Which tells me this whole idea is a little bit unfounded. Yes. Right? The big shift that we've seen, though, is that the Chamber of Commerce in Cobb County, which is, which is hugely influential, has gotten behind this. You have this effort that's actually been led by two Republicans mm. um, to bring a metro related transit system into the Atlanta metro area. Um, it is still in flux. There is no, there is, we won't know until the end of session exactly what that's going to look like. They're literally swapping languages in and out um, to kind of get the bill where they want to get the bill. I personally believe that it's needed. Um, I think if Atlanta is going to continue to, and I'll say Atlanta Metro, 12, 16 counties are going to continue to be the engine of Georgia and continue to uh, bring in the, the Fortune 500s. Um, and quite frankly, all the talent that we need to keep this, you know, Governor Dewey likes to brag about Georgia being the uh, number one business in the country to, to uh, the number one state in the country to do business in. And I say number one for who? Right. Right. We have to, again, going back to inclusivity, making sure it's good for everyone. Because when people cannot get to work, when, when you know, it's number one state to do business in, but it's also like the top five worst traffic in the country, mm -hmm. it's not saying a lot. Mm. You know, and when you have these horrendous bills around, you know, who can adopt kids and who can go to what bathrooms and who can do all this, those Fortune 500, those conventions, all those things are going to start to dry up, mm -hmm. and we know it. And Republicans are starting to know. So transit is only one part of that. Metro Atlanta transit is only one part of that. But also transit services down to Macon, through Augusta, up to Chattanooga, out to out to um, down to Columbus. That's all part of that that same discussion that will be fleshed out. Mm -hmm. Yes, my perspective is not a common person who shares your knowledge and information and a lot of resources and things that are related to this. But thank you, sir. Thank you for coming out. Uh, I, my question is specifically about the network area. You talked about that was one of the greatest areas that you had the best student had participation, but at that meeting they were applauding your presence. How did you communicate to the individual people in the community that you were coming, that you were the best of me? Because that seems Sure. Um, for our, prior to that meeting, for our first meeting, January 2017, um, I had no idea how many people were going to show up. But I knew that we were never going to be able to meet in our former place, which held about 50 or 60 people. Mm. I, I committed <coughs> to we would never meet here again. Right. We would always be larger than that place. Mm. So number one, it was a commitment that I made and our executive committee meeting, mm. which wow. we had 212 people show up. Wow. The act was about we don't have any city council people, no county commissioners, nothing that part of the county. And I looked at that map and saw what happened. Um, I leaned on, I went out and found through our database. So one thing I did was um, 
we just launched an, an online database uh, or request forms for people, and we start gathering information, about, gathering data about people from all across the country. Now, again, I kind of started noticing those people in the request uh, that that at least want to get engaged. They're they're asking. Um, I found two people that I didn't know up there as stakeholders. I didn't know even know where to hold the meeting. And I was literally looking on county parks and rec website mm. to find it, find the location. Um, and then we started with with um, with getting the word out. We went out through our um, email addresses. I actually made face I made specific um, targeted Facebook posts mm. and ads specifically to that zip code for that area. Um, and I can take a step forward. I went on LinkedIn mm. and I looked for folks that was in my network that lived and worked in that area. And reached out to them directly and said, hey, we're coming and this is when. Mm -hmm. um, and you know why we're coming? Another important thing is why we're coming. Mm. We're coming because we want to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about our platform per se or what I've done or what we're planning on doing. It was about opening our ears and about letting people know we were coming to their part of the county because we want to hear about their challenges. Mm -hmm. We want to hear about what they said. We walked in a hand a three by five note card to every person in the room. I said, I want you to tell me two things. Tell me what you think the Democratic Party should be doing for you. And number two is how do you think we could help something that's going on in your community? So the whole premise of the meeting shifted from an informational thing about we were giving something to, to you guys, and it turned into how we are here to, to help and serve your needs. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that had a lot to do with it, right? I did why we were coming into their community. Mm -hmm. Fair enough? Yes, sir. What can we do to increase the current link between us and the Metro Yeah. yeah. Um, that, is, that is actually one thing I've brought up, and I'll tell you, one part at least is what I'm doing right now. You know, I, I'm here today. I'll be in Carroll County in two more weeks. I was in Douglas County, you know, not long ago. So I try to do that, you know, but I understand I'm still I'm one person. Um, but also expanding our links. You know, anytime we get to get together in fellowship, you know, anytime we get together at state committee meetings, um, the people that you do know, you know, I have a connection with that young man right there, um, and I use him, what's going on in Columbus? I'm talking about Donald Perkins, by the mm -hmm. way. Um, so, you know, I'll ask him, hey, what's going on through your way? What's happening? What's going on? Um, and he, he can do the exact same thing. So building a personal rapport with people that you know in different counties that are, that are involved in the parties. I think um, us doing a better job as chairs, you know, mm -hmm. getting together, exchanging ideas about what's happening. Um, newsletters going far and wide. Within Cobb now, how about, you know, we have four, five, six different counties that come. I was actually working with Paulding County to get them stood up as a county chair chapter. Um, so there's there's no secret sauce to it, right? Mm -hmm. It's just going to be a matter of building those connections and building those links. And realizing that from within the metro to outside, there's still issues that we have that are linked together. When Patricia talked about um, rural counties. Cobb is actually listed as a rural county. Mm -hmm. We have 780,000 people in our county. Um, but when it came time, we were actually part of that caucus as well. Yeah, which surprised me as well. When you go out to West Cobb and we start talking about the laws around having chickens in your yard or not, you realize that <laughs> we are, you know, part of Cobb is, is definitely still rural. So. We, we just have to do a better job of connecting with each other and connecting on, each, on issues that, that we kind of rally around as Democrats. Um, and then utilizing those, those connections that we already have. Mm -hmm. Ben, you had a question? Yeah. Uh, is there any Democratic participation in foresight checks that you're doing? Oh, let's see. Um, can I give a plug to the Forsyth County? Um, on May 26th, they will be having a golf tournament. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's about all I know about it. <laughs> 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 but I do know that. If you like to play golf, you kind of get together and maybe get a team from Muskogee County mm -hmm. to go up and play some golf. Yep. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of helpful there. But that, that is, they do have um, they do have an active Democratic community up there. 
and, and all earnest, I was just exchanging emails with them today about the uh, about the golf tournament. So, um, you know, what what I found is that Democratic committees across the state vary widely in their engagement, their maturity, um, and, and maturity. I simply mean, you know, their their capacity and their fluids and organization. I don't mean to say. <laughs> Anything out of the way, um, but seriously, I mean, there they are there are some counties um, that this audience would look huge to. Mm. You know, that if they get fifteen people, they are they are doing outstanding. Um, so I always tell people um, there there are no there's not a single Democrat that's on an island. It don't matter what neighborhood you live in, what school you go to, what church you go to, there is always another Democrat that is there. They not they not may not be speaking up. You may not know they're there, but there is always another Democrat there. So in some of these counties um, where it seems to be smaller, I encourage them the same thing. In Muskogee County, you can fill this entire place. I have no doubt. Mm. This is this is one one hundredth of the amount of Democrats in this county. Could easily fill this place. Up. I don't mean easy as in it would be easy. <laughs> I mean easy as in there's enough Democrats to actually fill this room and more. So, so the idea of you know what Democrats do in different places is simply a matter of being able to get out and really get these people involved and engaged. Uh, but four times as many as many others have things going on. Yes, ma'am. I'm the new chair for the Board of Communications and Public Relations Subcommittee, and want to put in a plug for thank you. <laughs> Uh, for this Friday night's happy hour at the speed meeting, five o'clock. Please mm -hmm. come join us. Yeah. Um, but when you talked about charging for some different events and different yes. tiers, we have really, really just pushed on to say that uh, we have to offer mm -hmm. opportunities mm -hmm. for people to get involved and get engaged different and events. to fund us. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Muskogee works a little bit different, but I can tell you, Kyle, we did not get a single dime from the Democratic Party of Georgia, nor the DNC, or the D Triple C. What? Oh. So, which means all the fundraising that happens, it's us. We're doing it. Mm -hmm. What I've also found out is if with a lot of people, if you don't ask, guess what? Shine with <laughs> <laughs> so, so, this idea of having tiers, we've done tiers on membership. From free to fifty bucks to two hundred bucks to four hundred bucks for an annual yearly membership, and then it's our charge to make sure that the membership is getting value out of that. Mm -hmm. Right? Our regular donuts meetings that we have is five bucks. Again, it's optional, so we prefer if you pay. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things we've done is to let people know that we do not get funding anywhere else. Because people's just general thought is like, oh, yeah, you get funding for the national organization. And all those emails you get from the DNC about chipping in five bucks, 25 bucks, and then DBG, sure, of course we get a credit of that. No, we don't. Mm. Right. So the idea is letting people understand the fundraising and the fact that if you want these programs to go on, if you want to flip these seats, you're going to have to be part of that change. Mm -hmm. The idea of offering different levels of engagement. It's really as simple as within campaigns. Now, now I'm very clear to, to always articulate the fact that a county committee is not a campaign. Mm. Campaigns are very specific. They're like projects, right? They have a start date, they ramp up really fast, they spend a lot of money really quick, and then they end. Mm -hmm. Win or lose, right? They end, they're done. County committees are not that way. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we should not structure ourselves that way, right? We should be 24-7, 365. And I hate saying that as a chair, but boy, it still feels that way a lot of times. <laughs> right? Um, but the, the idea around that is that we can't function as campaigns. Right? We should be most active when camp when there are no campaigns going on. We should be engaging voters when, they, when there are no one asking them to vote for Tom or Sally or anyone else. We have to use those opportunities because just like anyone else, when 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 the when the sea is the cause, mm -hmm. it's when a rock makes a big splash. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to do. It was great getting involved in our campaigns and, and get out there and do all that, but when there's no campaigns going on, boy, that's when people have to figure out and find out who we are and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is offer those events. Mm -hmm. You know, 
If they're not giving the campaigns, no campaigns going on, we, we find, be careful about this, we find <laughs> multiple opportunities mm -hmm. to ask people to donate funds. Mm -hmm. We have merchandise now, t-shirts, buttons, balloons, whatever I can kind of come up with, right? Um, we have a committee now that, that's on that uh, to make sure that we have merchandise for sale. I sat down and in, in PowerPoint kind of came with some new logos that we have. We have two logos now. One is the Blue Phoenix. May she ever rise and shine bright over Cobb County. Mm -hmm. And we have um, the Blue Wave, mm -hmm. right? Which is just Blue Tidal Wave that's kind of taking over Cobb County. Uh, so we have a little fire and ice, right? <laughs> fire and water. Nice. Kind of, kind of play. Um, mm -hmm. But guess what? Now we sell t-shirts and buttons and magnets. Mm -hmm. We can do that. I also know that we have events to where we charge $150 for the we annual gala um, that's going to get different Democrats to come than our $5 barbecue on 4th of July. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean they're one bit more or less Democrat at all. Because mm -hmm. people are going to look for different opportunities to be able to chip in and give. We have a regular giving, we have strategic giving. I ask people to give $25, $50, $100, $1,500, $2,500. You know why? Because they're Democrats. Mm -hmm. And then trust us to do the work that we need to do to go out and flip seats, to go out and protect seats. Mm -hmm. When we ask, people usually just not. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yes, right. I see several of them. <laughs> I just came in. <laughs> uh, Harry, do you have one? And then we'll kind of wrap this up. Yeah. Oh, oh, you have. Oh, yes. Um, we have, and this is something I was like uh, reading about. Um, and I was looking on the SOS uh, database, the Secretary of State's website for the elections. And for State House, we have. Democrats campaigning for a full two thirds of the state house, 122 seats, mm -hmm. I believe. 65% uh, of uh, the Democrats who are campaigning for these 122 se uh, seats are women. Yes. Uh, yes, and this is like a reflection of maybe this is the year of the woman right here. But do you think this is also like an indication that we may be able to like take more of a share of the state house in November um, with the, with this many uh, candidates, because I don't think we've had this many in a long time in Georgia politics for state house. Yeah, um, our our house leader Bob Trammell mentioned uh, this as well, right? That mm -hmm. um, we do have a strong uptick, not only in overall number 
of Democratic seats are being, or, or seats are being contested by them, as I mentioned earlier in, in Cobb, we have the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a uh, majority, you know, I'm not afraid to say a majority of people that are running these house seats are women. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that in Cobb, I see that all over. It is, is legitimately happening. Mm -hmm. um, is it a year of women? Sure, why not? Let's make it a year of women. Turn out more votes in Democratic elections than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Why not? Why not? Why not have the people who actually vote for those who are being elected be those ones that are actually being elected? Mm -hmm. That's not rocket science. Many of us uh, maybe have had the opportunity to meet you, but I'm sure a few of you are talking about that. Apparently, it's in the uh, conference committee right now. Yes. Is that, is that, as, far, as far as I know, I'm, I'm going to be very interested to see how the rest of the session plays out. Mm -hmm. it, it is, and I don't know four or three what's happened with that either. That's the whole barcode and the picture ballots. Um, I was sad to hear that House or Senate Bill three fifteen passed today. Um, that was a computer crimes bill. I do have a background in cybersecurity, um, so that bill is a bit problematic. Uh, yeah, there's, it's not going to be there's not going to be a lot of fun between now and Friday as session starts to wind up because. Republicans are really teeing some of these bills up, and uh, as we get close to signing die and signing die plays out, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of bills that we're going to we're not going to be too happy about. So right. just kind of steal yourself for that. Uh, but yes, political rewind has been fantastic. I enjoy being on the show. Um, a, a little plug: I'll be on this Friday, um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday from two to three. Make sure you guys tune in if you don't. It's a great statewide program. Where we talk about local politics, all over kind of international stuff. So. Uh, yes, it will be. I'm going to start to tour around a little bit more. I, I, I don't know yet, but I'll try to. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. Make that request. We'll not get, we'll listen to that. So, <laughs> and I think we have one more as we close out. Last question. Last. Just wanted to know what the Democrats plan on Coming home. Uh -huh. um, I can tell you, I, I have knocked on enough doors over the years where I can tell you this this is an obvious issue. Uh, it's an educational issue. Mm -hmm. um, it's an issue that ties back where I can play. I, I can really play this. It's an issue that, that ties into understanding your rights as voters. But it also ties into who we have as Secretary of State. Because as Secretary of State, uh, setting that bar and that understanding for voter access, voter rights, voter privileges is key. And when you have voters that come back home, and I don't mean recent, I've talked to voters as, as, as from the 70s and 80s that say, oh, I can't vote. Why can't you vote? Oh, because I'm not allowed to. Wait a minute, you've got 20 years, 25 years and not voted because someone told you at some point in time you couldn't. And what's more scary is that no one has educated you since then that you don't have access to the polls that you have the state constitutional right to go and do. The problem with that is there's a perception problem, as we all know in politics, is about how we're being viewed. Are we going out courting segments of the population that we may should not to get a vote? I'll say this, I would not let that scare a single person in this room. I would stand on the moral, what would we say, the, 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 the moral side of this issue to say that a person has done their time, mm -hmm. they deserve the right to have a vote cast for who they want to represent them. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. This whole idea that we're going to drop really creepy fellas and really creepy people that don't have the right to vote is absolutely wrong. Whatever that crime was, whatever has been deemed to the judicial system and to the correction system, they are out now and they are not on papers and they have the right to vote. They should not be shamed. They should not be ignored. And their right to vote should be upheld. Mm -hmm. And as Democrats, I would say we should talk to them, we should educate them, and make sure they get to the point. As citizens, as Americans, 
I would say that every one of them, regardless of what side of the aisle they're on, you're going to get me to take off my partisan chairman's hat now and speak as an American citizen what's right for this country. Mm. We incarcerate way too many people. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, let me let me get that off that box. <laughs> let me get off that box. That's going to take us somewhere where we don't have time for it tonight. Um, but yes, we should. Every American that that's granted their rights should be encouraged to go out and. How, how do they know how to get their rights? They should just start with the Secretary of State putting out information they need to know. It should be published information. They should have that information upon leaving. Um, but that kind of gets to the heart of our question is that transitional service from when you get out and, and transition back into, into civilian life, um, those services that you are afforded. But it also should just be part of society and saying these folks have done their time. Who, this happened a long time ago to them, and they think they can't vote. I mean, what's the procedure for them? Have we educated them? I would put that squarely in the responsibility of the Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. That is not a partisan issue. As Democrats or Republicans, we can all do our part to make sure people get to the polls. Well, I know that, but I mean, if say you know someone is in that situation, what do you tell them? Here's oh, you, you tell you tell them to go. Oh, okay, I, I'll get. You tell them. You tell them. Yes, because they have a driver's license, right? And they have they registered to vote. If they have a driver's license, they can go online and register to vote. And if they're not sure, they can go to. I just tell people to Google Georgia MVP page, and they can go out there. They put in their first initial, last name, and date of birth, and county, and they can find out if they're registered to vote for their status. Okay, so they can just register. They can just register. Okay. Yes. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. Um, I will be sticking around as long as necessary. Tune in this Friday in Political Rewind. Um, I, as always, will be a humble servant of the Democratic Party and those people that, that need me. So um, thanks a lot for your attendance tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. We Everyone, if, if I've already got some people that are trying to connect with me via Facebook. Um, I am over my friend's limit. <laughs> <laughs> but if you go to my public page, it's the Michael C. Owens. It's a public page you can go to and connect with me on there. Um, if you guys use Twitter, uh, my Twitter handle is Owens, Owens 4 ga 13 O-W-E-N-S-F-O-R-G-A-13. Um, and I think I will leave some cards. I'll leave some cards at the front desk. Sorry, we couldn't hear you. What was your name again? Yeah, it's Monty. Yeah, Thank you. I'm Jeremy Hobbs, and uh, I too am running for District 7 uh, City Council. And um, I hope that this year, don't let it be a 20% year. Get out, vote, be the change, whether it's me or Mr. Saya. So I see you. Please come out there and make sure you vote. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm Valerie Haskins. I live in Meriwether County, and I'm a state.
Good evening. I am D. Dawson Hagler, and I am your candidate for Secretary of State. I have been to 65 counties so far in the state of Georgia. I am on a mission uh, to protect our voting rights. Kim has messed it up. I'm going to fix it back. Yeah. We're not trying to make America great again. We're trying to make Georgia Spain again. D. Dawson Hagler. And I'm Cheryl McCrane, and I'm running for school board district two. We could do better. <laughs> yes. Hi, I'm Ben Anderson. I'm the chairman of the Mary Willie Kane Democratic Committee. My mission hasn't changed since I gave, became a Democrat to help all Democrats get elected all through the state and do what it takes by all means necessary. Oh, you know? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll be in touch with you. I gotta go get my daughter.